Good morning and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. We have introduced an 1880 imported Windsor Canadian blended Canadian whiskey made with only premium grains and glacial born waters imported and bottled by the Windsor Distillery Company, Deerfield, Illinois. This whiskey is three years old. They're both three years old. There's the crest, the crown for the Dominion of Canada, Queen Elizabeth II. There's is it two lions holding up the shield. There's the uh, kind of like their uh, insignia double, supremely smooth. That if you look at old ads from 1940s and 50s and 60s, it always said that supremely smooth. Blended and distilled under strict supervision of the Canadian government. Um, used to be listed on the Beam Suntory website, but they, they updated their website earlier this year and they scrubbed a lot of the brands off the website. You would never know they existed. I don't know why they did that, but Sazerac did the same thing. Uh, well, they all do that. Brown Foreman doesn't show a lot of their brands, although they're better at it. Diageo uh, and so on. Anyway, I don't understand it. Heaven Hill, they especially don't show stuff. The Windsor Distillery Company, Deerfield, Illinois. Yeah, more like the Beam Suntory Company. There's a bottling plant in Illinois. Oh, well, I got a little bit left. If you can see through this brown bottle, that's good. Brown bottle, that's what you want. But this one's a clear bottle. The competitor, Seagram's Canadian Hunter, introduced in 1984. There's the Canadian Hunter. There's the Huskies. There's the Mountains. This bottle is at least 31 years old and may be as old as 36 years old. It was sold to Sazerac in 1989 along with a bunch of other brands. Then it was changed from Seagram's Canadian Hunter, a Canadian sipping whiskey to Canadian Hunter, a no, no age state. Now this was three year age to a no age statement. Whiskey with natural flavors added as they call it, which is on the market today. Now if you go to international market like I did, you'll see this on the shelf next to the modern Canadian Hunter. They have these lined up and then the modern. Same price, $8.99. I think they have the same tag for both. Uh, I don't know if the UPC was changed when they converted it. Uh, UPC code, it ends in 027. I'll have to check that next time I go if they changed it. That's so it'll ring up, you know, on the laser scanner. All right. Uh, Tommy Carroll, good Saturday, Jay. Good Saturday to you. I remember back in the, during the George W. The George H. W. Bush presidency, eighty-nine to ninety-three. There was a video clip of him at a at a supermarket, and then, of course, the controlled media they went and tried to make it look like he never heard of a scanner. And they said, look, he's so dumb. He's so out of touch with the common shopper. He doesn't even know. He'd never seen a scanner. But he was really telling them he was amazed by that type, that new type of scanner that they had. And I'm not a defender of him because I don't even care for him. And I didn't even, looking back, I thought his, I think his presidency was a, was terrible. But I'm just saying it shows you how to get twist things. Anyway, uh Jay Hoppy 05 says you should eat again in reviews. I do sometimes, I do, but it's um a problem in a way because you start to lose focus on what the video is about. You know, is it about the food or is it about the product? It's like why I don't do those on location videos anymore in the store at the bar. Because then you start to lose focus on what it's about. And plus in a public place is so distracting. And then people get really paranoid, like, why are you filming here? You know, they're I don't know. It's just a lot easier at home, like home alone, <laughs> you know. But anyway, uh, or with my friend David or my daughter, she's gonna do some online videos with me, I believe. Um, 
So heater finally went up. There it is. Gone and mostly forgotten. <laughs> uh, the modern one sells pretty well. And they were both $8.99. $8.99. That's a nice price. I think it's a dollar cheaper than at uh, Total Wine and more. Uh, well, I could be wrong. Total Wine does some low prices. Of course, they only have the modern one, as you would expect. I wish they had the Canadian Hunter Rye, the Hunter Rye, 90 proof. But uh, I'm not going to keep being obsessed about it. I keep mentioning that, but I would like to get it. <laughs> A proper bottle, you understand? As they say in merry old England or Scotland or Wales, I want to get a proper bottle, not the little plastic bottle, 200 milliliter. I have tags, but I don't think I'm gonna need them because look how pick. None of these glasses are clean. Hmm. Look how pale, pale straw. I wash these with hot, hot water, soapy water. Rinse them off real nice. I like everything clean. I'm telling you, I like everything clean. I go to somebody's house and it's not clean. I get freaked out and I don't go back <laughs> generally or I try to avoid it. All right. And it's funny with some people, they're worrying about the Coco V. You're going to make me sick. You're going to make me sick, the Coco V. I said, I don't know why you're worrying about getting sick. Look at your, your surroundings, your habitation, the way you live at your house. You, don't, you obviously are not concerned about um, health. <laughs> All right. But, you know, can't solve IQ issues, I guess. All right. Uh, golden. Golden, deep golden amber. Brew tube says label out. Right, label out. Okay, so I've got to close my... 7S says, yo, we owe to you. So I've got to close my eyes because one is pale straw and one is uh, gold. Dr. Dave, beer review says that he doesn't like to use the word pale because he said it doesn't sound nice. I, cu I couldn't get over hearing that. I was like... Well, it's just a description, you know, pale. Maybe he's thinking of like the pale horse and the book of Revelation, that, that sickly horse, you know. Oh, that could be a turnoff. Must have sloshed it. Okay. Um, but when we say pale, is like pale straw. Well, pale ale, India pale ale. That's pale, right? That's a pail of water. Pales in comparison. All right. Here we go. I think I'll be able to tell them apart, but I was wrong last time, wasn't I? God, I was, golly, I was embarrassed. Mm -mm -mm. I was doing heir to the throne. I thought I had it nailed. I said, this is so obviously inferior, trash, garbage, heir to the throne, junk pile. And why did I pay $30 divided by two for it? I got a half price. And then to my shock and dismay, I was wrong. I say, well, it just goes to show you, you think you know it all and you don't. Seem like I'd have learned that by now. Uh, yeah. It's got that pungent whiskey aroma, meaning grains and fermented grains and the, you say mold, you mean mold. Well, yeah, because what you think yeast is, you know, mold fungi family. So you get that. Some people don't like the smell or taste of alcohol because that's what it tastes like to them, like mold fungi. It's sort of like that. But it must be good for you. It must be healthy because Jesus turned water into wine. You say, well, I got some friends. They say it was just grape juice. <laughs> Yeah, they got those people out there, certain sext, S-E-C-T-S, -E -E established around 15, 17, that like to recreate things. But pay no mind to that. 
Okay. Uh, well, this is the same thing, but it's, it, uh, I mean, the same principle here, but it's more pungent. I believe it's more pungent. Okay, they both have a full nose. I think I can open my eyes now because I'll just put them close to my chest. Dallas Cowboys, good morning. Good morning to you. All right, my eyes are a little irritated. Um, I think I get that because uh, fooling with all these cardboard boxes all day. And you get the little, you tear them open and I think it makes a spray of like little grit pieces of it and it gets in your eyes. And it's a game. All right. Um, where's the dawn? Um... There's the faintest little touch of blue in the sky now. So Dawn is not exactly busting out, but it's seeping in <laughs> like a slow leak. Okay. Like Judas Priest said, before the dawn. All right. They both smell nice. I mean, it's three-year age. They're young. Like David Bowie, but they are like young American, young American, young American. These whiskeys, what are young Canadians? Just smell like um, kind of like standard. And you know what? When you smell them, they don't smell like they got flavorings added. No, no strange caramel candy, no um, almond extract kind of odd oddities. No space oddities. You know what I'm saying? Taste time. Just, it's just regular. It's like stereotypical whiskey flavor. Nah, not like bourbon, because bourbon got the deep char, usually the, the, the deep char notes. Canadian whiskey is like all of that minus the char, which makes a big difference, because then you're just getting the corn rye spice and you know like malt whiskey so it even though there's not really that much difference between canadian whiskey and bourbon aside from the charred oak and of course canadian whiskey can have the flavorings added so i guess that's a big difference but uh but you know what i'm saying the general principle but once you subtract the charred oak, it actually is a big difference. So it seems like, oh, that is, it's not really a big difference. But then it is a big difference because you're tasting it and it ain't the same. You know what I'm saying? It's a big gap. Now, now you say, wait, back up, back up, back up. I know what you're saying. Back up. What if you took Canadian components, corn, 80, let's say 80 percent corn whiskey, 10 percent rye. 10% malt whiskey, single malt whiskey, and you blended them together and you aged them in a never before used charred oak barrel. And you followed the bourbon protocols exactly to a T. And you age them at least two years. Well, in Canada, it'd have to be three. US is two uh -huh, for straight bourbon. In Canada, it had to be three just to be able to be sold. Okay. You would have bourbon, but you couldn't call it bourbon. So could you do that in Canada? Well, of course you could do it. There's no law against that. You just, you could call it bourbon style whiskey, bourbon style whiskey. See, that's what the, 
That's where Crown Royal screwed up. Remember three years ago, they made Crown Royal bourbon mash. Oh, and then there was a big uproar about, oh, it's not bourbon. You're tricking people. And maybe they were trying to. I don't know. So then they had to come back and say, okay, all right, it's blender's mash. But I think they could have solved the problem right off the bat if they had just come out with Crown Royal bourbon style. Just call it Crown Royal bourbon style whiskey. Then you got it. You got it, man. No confusion. Like sometimes you'll see Crown Royal, uh, Crown Royal, ha ha. You'll sometimes you'll see uh, Red Stripe, Jamaican style with a uh, lager. And then if you look, it'll say made in uh, the Netherlands. They're not claiming this from Jamaica. They're saying it's Jamaican style. Well, anyway, getting off of that, these do not taste like bourbon. Short story long, these do not taste like bourbon. Except for the corn part. You get the nectar from the honeysuckle, all right? You get the slight fruitiness. You get the cornbread. You get the spicy rye. That's all in comportment with, with bourbon. But you don't get the charred oak, and that's where the comparison breaks down in a very serious and profound way. And we're not saying one is better than the other. We're just saying it's different styles, It'd be like saying lemon cake's better than chocolate cake. And I would say, what makes you determine that? Well, I like lemons more. Well, that doesn't make it better. It's just your personal preference. See? <sighs> hmm. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. Kyle says, good morning. But if you could make up anything, you could make up anything. I don't quite understand that comment. Okay, Beer Hounds in Orange County, California. Hey, Ron, how's it going? Cheers. It's going fine, more or less. I was sleeping so good last night. No, I mean, I was sleeping well. <laughs> I didn't teach English, but, but uh, except for half a year. Um, but, every, you know, everything's fine. I got up so early, looked at the clock. I said, 1.45 a.m. I said, let me get up. <laughs> I had to upload that video for Snowball Juice. You say, oh, no, not a beer called Snowball Juice. Yep. <laughs> An IPA called Snowball Juice. If I was ready to rip into that and put it down so bad and, and castigate it and denigrate it and every kind of ate it. Then I liked it. <laughs> I said, well, this tastes pretty good. Actually, it tastes really good. <laughs> so so I liked it. These are both in a very common style. Like the Grateful Dead would say, seems a common way to go. All right. And I'm going to be like Jimmy. I'm going to row <laughs> the boat ashore. All right, no. Um, this one has more grain spirits, though. You feel me? It's like more like grain alcohol, grain neutral spirits, just grain alcohol. But I don't think the differences between these two is really too big. How much was the Windsor Canadian? Uh, $10.99. It's $10.99 at Winn-Dixie in Destrehan, Louisiana on United States Highway 61 southbound. Never seen it anywhere else. 
Oh, wait a minute. Let me retract. They started selling it over here too now. I just remembered in the in the plastic handle bottle, which is of course overpriced because it's Winn Dixie. Everything over there is overpriced. You say, "Oh, you have a beef against them?" I do. The prices are too high, and I would say that they sell beer that's expired, but I can't single them out for that because everybody's guilty of that. I don't, I can't think of a store right off offhand that doesn't just sell atrocious. A, atrociously outdated beers. So you got to check because they're not going to. And I don't care what the three tier system says. You know, these distributor guys, we protect the consumer. I say, no, nah, you don't protect the consumer. You protect your monopoly is what you protect. And it, one guy got angry with me, boy. And I talked to him all the time. And he's told me he was getting hot. I said, no, you're getting angry because your job depends on this because you work in the three tier system. See, I'm free from that. I don't, I'm not part of that. All right. I said, so I'm, I don't have to defend it. Only thing I got to do is attack it. And I will relentlessly. He was getting mad at me yesterday because he said, oh, Drew Brees is starting Sunday. I said, yeah. He said, yeah, they announced it. I said, well, he's got my sympathy. And then I said, wait, no, he doesn't have my sympathy. I turned my back on him. Oh, why? I can't believe that. I said, yeah, you know why. And then he was trying to defend him on that, saying, well, I said, no, 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 no. Everybody wants to run behind him cheering. Yay, Drew. When he's doing something that's not important, like playing football, you know, but when the chips are down and he's talking about something that means something important and he weasels out in 20 minutes, y'all want to run behind him and cheer with your little Saints flags. I said, not me. I don't. When you betray me, I remember these things. Thank you, Metallica. For... All right. Uh, now. Let's say I get this right. I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't really matter because they're so close, oh, so very close, that in a practical sense, it's irrelevant. It's meaningless. To, to It's a 50-50 shot anyway. It's like flipping a quarter. You say, oh, look, I got heads. What a genius. No, you flip the, a coin, you got heads. Big deal. It's like a game that's even money. It's even money. Okay, it's, it's an even game. So your team won. They won... 17 to 16. Oh, wow. Then they're running around the stadium talking about, we killed y'all. No, you barely won. All right. Not to mention that bad call in the second quarter. Uh, but uh, it's like that with these. So I'm going to say, really, for all intents and purposes, for any practical purpose, I can't tell them apart. Okay? See, I preface things. I'm not going to take credit where credit is not due. All right? I'm not. So what would be my solution to this problem? Well, there is no solution because it's not even a real problem. It's just a, you know, a trivial thing. Tasting whiskey at dawn is trivial. It's not important. Some people think it is. It isn't. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Reviewing beer, wine, and liquor and doing beer hangouts and reviewing beer and all that, none of that's important. Some people think it is. It isn't. I'm sorry to break your, you know, bust your bubble. That is not an important activity. It might be fun. It's enjoyable. Camaraderie, things like that. But to think it's important, wrong, wrong. Tasting beer and giving reviews is not important. You might say that's hurting your channel. You shouldn't say that. You got to make people think it's important. I don't have to do that. I'm not doing it. Because it's not. It's fun, but it isn't important. I would buy whatever's cheaper. If the Seagram's is cheaper, buy a penny, I'll buy that. If the Windsor Canadian's cheaper, buy a penny, I'll buy that. It's a tie. What can I say? But maybe, just maybe, this is theory more than fact. Maybe this one has more grain alcohol flavor, which would be a detraction. But see, I'm not even sure about that. I'd have to pour another glass of each, but I ain't going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to say without any sort of confidence, really, that this is the Seagram's and this is the Windsor. But um, if I lose, give me no, no downgrade. And if I win, give me no upgrade because I already told you I can't really tell them apart. SCH, Seagram's Canadian Hunter. Ha ha, I am going to take the credit. 
the king reigns. Like Caligula said, I live. Just got stabbed in the in the in a chest with a huge sword. I live. Yeah. Then you got your head cut off, so you didn't really live. Meaningless statement. But anyway, you see, so I got it. But it was a it was a, it was a, a coin flip. So let's look at the comments. What you drinking? I'm enjoying a brewery ex Suda dude Imperial Hazy IPA. I'm drinking Windsor Canadian. I mean, drinking. I wouldn't drink at 5:30 in the morning. You think I'm crazy? I was tasting Windsor Canadian introduced in 1880. Been on the market since 1880. It's one of the really old old brands. I must say to you today. I didn't say it was popular. I say it was old. <laughs> Versus Seagram's Canadian Hunter, which hasn't even been sold, hadn't been on the market since around 1990 because they phased it out and replaced it with Canadian Hunter. But it's a, it's still on the shelves because as evidenced by me buying it on the sh off the shelf last year. And still on the shelf today, unless they sold out, but I doubt it. <sighs> I saw that Snowball Juice video, says Jay Hoppy. Oh, I hope you liked it. Beer Hound says, sing it, Ron. <laughs> Thank you. Do you think Drew Brees is retiring after this season, Ron? If he's smart, he will. Kyle says, when Drew, but... All right, Maxwell. Good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, Maxwell. Kyle says, when Drew buys me a drink, I say, okay. And you ain't going to have that experience. It's helpful. That's why I do them. Yeah, it's helpful. It's nice. It's fun. It's good. Beer reviews are nice but they're not important. Okay. Now, some of the other people that do beer reviews that I'm friends with, some that I'm enemies with, but I, not by my choice. I don't, I don't, I don't make enemies. I, I like to be friends with everybody, to tell you the truth. But, uh, but I'm not volatile. You know, some people are very volatile and defensive. Like the Beach Boys said, said they come on like they're friendly, but inside they're so uptight. They think it's important. So if they think it's important, no, you know, no problem, no problem, no problem. If they came and asked me, hey, a Louisiana beer reviews, do you think it's important? I would tell them no. <laughs> but if you think it is fine, heavy is the head that wears a halo, says Tommy Carroll. Right. Right. So hold on to your ego. Yeah, you know, they trip through the day. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, it's interesting to read about that because um, Capitol Records said they trip through the day. That means they're taking lysergic acid dithylamide. You can't put that in a song in 1966. What are you thinking about? So then Brian Wilson said, oh, well, forget, hang on. Hold, hang on to your ego. We'll change it to uh, what, what's the new? Wait, what's the what was the song on Pet Sounds? Um, I know there's a reason. Then it was like I know there's a reason. <laughs> uh, but the, hang on to your ego is way better. I got the updated album, you know, with the with the bonus material. I often check your review before I buy a beer. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, that's it. The news is coming on. At the break of dawn. And anyway, what's coming up next on Tuesday? Oh, wait, tomorrow's Sunday. That's right. I have a dawn bus just Sunday. Um, yeah, what is coming up? <laughs> I have Crown Royal on Tuesday to close it out. Crown Royal. I think Crown Royal is going to win, to tell you the truth. People like to pick on Crown Royal, talk about how it's trash, but I don't believe it. Uh, order to Glenn Morangy LaSanta. You're the original guy, beer reviewer. Thank you for all the years of content, says La Rosa 823. Oh, thank you. You're, I appreciate you watching. And I appreciate you saying that. So anyway, I got two more Canadian whiskeys. Can't remember the one for tomorrow, but it's on, on the shelf over there, you know, on the counter. So I mean, I, I'm not going to forget because I'm going to be looking at it in a, in a minute. And then I got Crown Royal Tuesday. And then get ready. Get ready. Because we're going to go with Patty's coming up next. Patty's. He wants water. Drink. Let him drink. Patty water. <laughs>